inner students, my students in my secret society already know that mindset is everything. Meaning you're setting your mind for the hour, not for the day. It does shift, it does change. But every hour we check ourselves. No timer, you'll just know when you're shifting out of a, a state. You could be in a good state, then within like 45 to an hour, you could be slipping off it. Because every single genius throughout history and a correct understanding of scripture all teaches that the state you're in changes the degrees of the reality around you because it's already there like your winning world is already there you just have to set the temperature because i don't want you thinking you're creating thing that's a stupid way to look at it it's a little too it's too metaphysical to wrap your brain around too and it takes uh power away from god if you look at it like that um, but it, it certainly feels like it certainly feels like we changing um, reality for sure. If you are in the state of a millionaire, you go for your walk, your ritualistic walk, and you start imagining, okay, here are my family and friends waiting for me on the yacht. See, because you don't believe it, it's too far out there. It's too unrealistic. You're not making anything happen. This is why, for thousands of years, ceremonial magic ritual has been done by, you hold a scepter, you put the crown on, the king's crown, you put the robe on. They're signaling to their unconscious, they know how their royal art works, they know how the brain works. Meaning, yeah, if you dress like a sailor, or some yacht owner, like let's say this hat. This is not intentional, but this is a great example, right? Maybe it is intentional, I don't know. You dress like a sailor every day. You're by the water every day. You're doing everything like that to keep yourself in the state of this millionaire who has a yacht and all this. Eventually, opportunities open up, and I'm talking about within weeks or months. I don't, some people say longer, they're all wrong. They, they don't understand how cycles work. And let's go this way. Um, these opportunities that work open up, they will hit you. Kind of like, you know, that meaningful feeling of synchronicity. It's going to hit you hard. And you're going to go, oh, this opportunity is from the universe. Oh my God. And you're going to have the energy of you in that state of uh, being a millionaire, a yacht owner, to explore these opportunities that sometimes don't go anywhere, but they lead you to other friends, other networks. But those opportunities then link you somewhere because your brain is kind of mushed up and you know it, it, it's not a straight arrow the way we're supposed to be trained uh, so that's why we when we get what we want it's kind of like you know weird takes many diagonal turns before we get that uh, millionaire yacht life and now here's the thing is like most people would not be dedicated to that feeling of the yacht and the family and stuff that would actually be an abstract feeling for them it wouldn't be concentrated into their heart, what they truly want, so they'll never get it. And so a lot of people are like, wait, you're telling me that most people on earth don't want a yacht with their family and millions of dollars? Yeah, they don't. When you want something, it's an imaging system. It's an images in your head that never go away. And uh, you don't have to be successful to know this, man. Like you don't have to argue everything. Yeah, most people don't actually, they want other, they have something else blocking that uh, want, right? I'm sure the want's deep down, down there somewhere in like last place, but in first place is always some girl who dumped them or some girl that they want or something completely different than a yacht and millions of dollars, which is funny because everyone rationalizes as, oh yeah, a million dollars and a yacht means I can get the girl. Everyone can rationalize that, but they can't change their image. They can't change their want. And uh, you know, that image is dominated by, let's say, the anima, or like that archetypal experience of like the perfect woman, you know, that mold that no woman fits. That dominates men. You know, some people say that that male soul is feminine because of that, because that dominates them. And I can see that, I get it. Like, even if it's not, fuck, even if it's not a girl you know, it's some fantasy kind of girl in your head and that image yeah 
it, it's everywhere with everything you do, with your workouts, with your reading, with your studying, with, and uh, you have to own up to that, that you're built like that. That's why when now uh, feminists say like a woman inspires a man to be great, as stupid as it sounds, because there's so many like fucking homo billionaires or shit, it, it's true that man gets out of bed because that image in his head, it's not a woman, it's just an image, right? It's like this, something more. Kind of like on, the words honor, respect. You can't buy it, you can't, you can't even see it. It's not even tangible. But it means everything to the world. Even if it, if you lack it, the lacking of it means a, a bunch too, right? So, that's what this image is. Like, it means everything to us. As soon as you understand your image, what keeps replaying in your head, you can actually um, find, let's say it's uh, to be a great basketball player, okay? I know this is a worse example, but what the fuck is wrong with that dog? Someone's raping that dog, and I'm here for it. Like, finish the job, he's dead. So now check it out. If, it's, if your, like, dream is to be a pro basketball player, yeah, buying the clothes, buying the shoes, doing everything you can to be ceremonial, ceremonial about your ritual of your uh, basketball practice, right? Which is a type of like the, everything you do in play or in training is magic. It's a magnet. It's bringing you something. Uh, same with your thinking. And then, you know, when mind and body align, especially with what the soul wants, that's when you have that trifecta of uh, alchemy. And that's a, a lot more rare than you think. When you do see it, you see someone skyrocket to like a bunch of followers and all this, and then it fades away and then they become sellouts. But every time you see a, someone's wheel turning in alchemy, which a basic understanding of this is, um, how does food become gut bile and shit and all that? How does food turn into shit that comes out your ass? It changes state, that it's possible. You can change any state. This rock can be a gummy worm. Uh, I don't know how to do that because I don't have an interest in doing that. I only know what I know. And I know money, clout, and women. And I chose the three things that everyone wants. So I'm gonna be in business a long time. But there are people, there's martial arts masters, mind over matter kind of guys who have other focuses, right? But yeah, it's your imaging, right? If you don't believe you can manifest a different outcome around you, it's because you've got the wrong imaging. As soon as you get the right imaging, you go, huh, Zerko was right. And that was the most mystical shit I've ever heard. And maybe I'll pick up my Bible and learn that part of the Bible. It's the whole thing and you should think it up and you should learn it and you guys should stop calling me a fucking Christian mystic and actually actually just call me hey you're the only one who gets it and the crazy part about getting it is just like me we all eventually forget it then we'll come back to it okay more of these vlogs I'm gonna do like two more this week just for you guys stay tuned hit your noti bell gang all that hit the subscribe You can do anything you set your mind to. Chat? Are you listening, chat? You can do anything you set your mind to. Anything. But the problem is, anything's too abstract, so you'll never choose. How do you vividly get, yeah, how do you vividly see what you're trying to do? How do you go into your goals and your dreams and linger in the desire to, to, what, what is the point of lingering in, the, lingering in the desire? I want to be a good big time YouTuber who makes a lot of money, let's say. I am a big time YouTuber who makes a lot of money. I feel what it's like. I linger in the feeling, the desire, not in the future or the past, in the now. I walk straighter and I notice this surge of new energy like, I should make a new video today. And that surge of new energy it's not that motivational spike of 20 minutes. It's something you can stretch out for like six, seven hours of your day. If you're strategic, you can use music, you can use whatever to linger in that desire. Let's say you're a badass YouTuber, you'll play some badass music to get you in the zone. <coughs> or if you're really good, you'll just use your imagination 
That's what God put it here for. It's the imagination is like the blueprint to your dreams and the feeling is uh, how much you want to water that dream. So if you have a strong feeling uh, of something you've imagined, you're pumping that seed and it's growing exponentially. If you're in a negative state, if you're a depressed person, you're pumping it with negativity, meaning your dream might come true, you might get rich, but horrific shit will happen because you're not guarding the other parameters of your life, family and health. And for some reason, health has to come before family. Like your, your parents have to see a healthy face on their child before you can see a healthy face on your parents, right? Uh, which I've always lived uh, backwards where I think I just take care of my parents and make sure to like check up, check up on their diet and stuff. No, bro, your parents are aging and stressing because your diet is shit. Clean up your diet first. Shit like that. And uh, yeah, so health, family, and career. And it's either all three at once or none. Like if you just focus on family, your family will think you're a loser, your career is weak, and then they stop trusting you. Uh, they don't mean to, but in their unconscious, they feel unsafe because you're not making all that bread and stuff. So yeah, that's like, uh, that's that manifest, manifest your destiny type conversation you guys keep asking for and I never do it. But I feel like uh, my English language skills are strong enough to explain uh, this kind of esoteric mystery tradition that's lost, uh, that's, uh, that's been uh, blurred from the Bible, but you know, the Bible says you find the feeling, linger it, have it, it is yours now and it'll come to you. The problem is most of us think it'll come in the future, which that still happens, but it comes in a worse way, I think. And yeah, and why I love talking about this subject, like, oh, making dreams come true and shit, is I don't have a dream left that didn't come true, you know? I can post all my receipts, I can post how much I make, I can post all that to prove to you. Uh, yeah, as soon as I finish, like, all my big goals, the horrific shit happened to me, right? Yeah. Which was probably my turn anyway, so. Unresolved karma. You reap what you sow, this is biblical. And, uh, yeah. Anyways, God is great, and I swear to God, you guys are all gonna make it. It's the time frame that pisses you off. I don't know when it'll be. And, and I don't have an antidote. If you're angry of like when it's your turn, when is it gonna be my turn? You know, I was angry too. I don't have an antidote for that. I wish I did, but do whatever you can to get away from that anger because there's this thing that happens when <coughs> you're, uh, you're in the world of creations. Like you don't create, no one creates anything. God already created everything. You can tune into the frequency of any creation. One where you have like a great life, nice girl, money, all that or a negative world, depending on uh, uh, what, how much faith you have in your imagination. Like, let's say Floyd Mayweather, it's like an atheist, right? But he has so much faith in his imagination that he's number one, that God still rewards him, right? That faith of goodness, that the greater outcome is rewarded big time by God. A lot of people don't get that. It's not just reciting scripture, it's like living in your imagination. Uh, yeah, and I've been like a daydreamer my whole life. My life's kind of fucking awesome. I don't say it enough, you know? But it's awesome. And, uh, yeah, most people I meet, they lost like the art of daydreaming. So, there you go. Uh, these are official.com for more esoteric truths like this. And uh, everything is video. There's nothing scam. There's no scam component about this stuff. This is just how the world is. It's not just Paracelsus and thousands of other great minds who talked about tuning into. Uh, life is just about switching states, states of mind, and the world changes. Uh, like, if you've ever changed your state of mind to a winner, everything's going good that week, you just bump into someone on the road who offers you an opportunity to get on this podcast or a job. That portal that opened right there is because of that uh, seven-day cycle. It's a seven-day spiritual cycle of positivity. If you could be positive for seven days, you could be positive for 7,000 fucking years, bro. Okay, so you, you guys like these uh, clips where I talk about manifesting and that gay ass word and all that shit, right? And it's real, man. That magnetic uh, energy is so real. But you, you don't have to like 
rationalize it. You do, all you gotta do is ask yourself, when I'm winning, what did I look like? And usually it's you laughing, smiling. Even before you win, you're laughing and smiling. It's really strange. That's why, uh, yeah, if you're bitter and hating your life, then it's like a horrible lunar cycle, right? 28 days of shit. Now look at this. Everyone says, to manifest, you gotta think positive. You gotta think positive, bro. How do I end these thought loops? I just can't, I can't think, but... Bro, they, they, they tell you you gotta think positive, but no one says, how the fuck do you actually do that? That's actually tricky as fuck. Like, how many people try, try doing that and then they fail? And then the, the advice from all these, like, teachers is, well, have you tried thinking positive? It's like, what the fuck? No, there's tricks to this, dude. Have you ever seen where I just started laughing for no reason? Like, <laughs> like these kind of like giggles and stuff. I encourage this. I've encouraged this for years because I'm a grumpy guy. And uh, yeah, if I, before I focus and before I even will something, is it something I'm trying to do with my life? Before I put my focus on something, I always make sure I'm in a laughing mood. I make myself laugh, I'll watch something funny, and then I'll capture that positive energy and then go right to my goals and stare at them and focus, say them out loud, right? There is no point in, I see these videos with like millions of views on YouTube, on like manifesting and stuff. Dude, millions of people are doing nothing. They're just sitting in their room thinking that, cause like, oh, you just gotta think positive. No, dude, you actually gotta be positive. You can't just snap yourself into positivity. Like, you gotta, uh, yeah. like the, the ultimate trick is to do your mini goals throughout the day. Cause if you fuck up once, you get negative. But, um, yeah, I should make a, yeah, I'm gonna make like a fucking series. I'll, I'll even, yeah, I'll make a series about, uh, the tricks to staying positive which no one ever talks about like yes you should be in a fucking comical mood before you start focusing on what you want you should be in a like if you think positive i will have a ferrari what the fuck is that but now if i get you laughing ha 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 and now you're thinking of the ferrari yeah bro when you have a ferrari you're gonna laugh this is an easier frequency to tune into now does that make sense Also, the guy's talking about, like, you don't have to will it. Yeah, that's, like, for, like, 1% of the population, bro. Yeah, you still have to fucking get active and do it. You can't just think about it. But I, I know I, there are some people who just, yeah, the extremely lucky types that don't do shit for it. And we call them 11s. Huh. Jesus is king, Lord of Lord, God of all. Everything that I pray, praise the Lord. Worship Christ with the best of your portions. I know I will forget all He's done. He's the strength in this race that I run.